Ever since Security Breach released, the absence of Bonnie was one of the most prominent questions we've had. The game teased this mystery constantly, yet barely gave us any definitive information about him. Then when Ruin released, Steel Wool literally showed us the actual broken shell of Glamrock Bonnie, and yet somehow managed to only give us more questions about him. But I think it's been enough time. The community has answered a few of these questions, and I think I'm here to answer the rest. So slices, put on your aprons, and let's bake ourselves a theory. Let's start by going over everything we know about Bonnie from Security Breach, Ruin, and any other associated media. From Security Breach, we honestly don't get much. We get this definitive image and this likely image from a Bonnie bowling sign and a child's drawing, respectively. We also get three messages that reference him in some way. Missing, which reads, Security Report, 12.24 AM. Bonnie is seen leaving his green room in Rockstar Row, heading east towards the atrium. 2.40 AM, Bonnie enters the East Arcade. 4.12 AM, Bonnie enters Monty Golf. Understudy, which reads, Management Report. With Bonnie out of commission, we're making Monty the new bass player. Parts and service have already done the proper adjustments, this could be a good thing, Monty could be even more popular than Bonnie. And re-theme, which reads, Management Report. The bowling alley needs a re-theme. While most of the Bonnie art was removed, kids keep asking, where's Bonnie? Do we have an officially approved response? The only other information we get about this rabbit is that his claws are specifically designed to allow him to play bass. But they're also able to be very destructive, like what we see with Monty. But other than that, information on this guy kind of dries up. Ah, man, I did not see that rock. This is going to make running difficult, but I guess I'll manage. Ah, oh. next page. Okay. <clears throat> Today's video is brought to you by Morgan and Morgan for the people. Injured and don't know where to start? With Morgan and Morgan, it's so easy because Morgan and Morgan has modernized the injury law process, making it so easy to submit case details, sign contracts, and more all from your phone. With Morgan and Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave the couch. You don't need to sit through stuffy consultations or go to law offices or wait forever. In eight clicks or less, you can submit a claim to Morgan and Morgan. So if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan and Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less without ever having to leave the couch. For more information, go to forthepeople.com or dial pound law, that's pound 529 in your cell phone. Thanks again to Morgan and Morgan for sponsoring today's video. Well, deeper still, I guess. Maybe if I find whoever owns these woods, I'll send them a notice. To be honest, Ruin isn't much help either. Granted, we get some more information, emphasis on some. We get to see the official story given out by Fazbear Entertainment. Essentially, Bonnie retires from the band, gives his base to Monty, and just goes on with his life. We also get to see the still active shattered remains of Bonnie behind the bowling alley in a back room, eyes still lit, broken bowling ball around his head. Notably, there is one more bit of... I guess you could call Bonnie information. The wet floor bots. This is a bit of a mystery so far in the community, but basically there are 27 wet floor bots that you can find scattered throughout the Ruin DLC up until Bonnie Bowling. They have glowing eyes and while you're wearing the mask, they scream at you in this echo of chorus of voices. While you're wearing said Vanny mask, you can actually deactivate them. Their eyes turn off, the screaming stops, and they lurch over. If you manage to do this to all 27 of them, one more spawns in the corner of Bonnie Bowl. And if you deactivate that one, it opens a secret room where you can find four more surrounding Bonnie. And if you deactivate all four of those, finally Bonnie's eyes turn off. So all in all, there's 32 wet floor bots that are somehow connected to the power of Bonnie. So what's the deal with this? Like what's actually going on? here. We've got several questions to answer and I'm going to try to answer them all. In my eyes, the most pertinent questions are 1. When was Bonnie destroyed? 2. Who destroyed Bonnie? 3. Why was Bonnie destroyed? And 4. What is the connection between Bonnie and these wet floor bots? So let's go chronologically down the list and knock out the first two questions. I had always been personally hesitant to assume that Monty was the one that destroyed Bonnie, at least specifically out of jealousy or want to join the band. It just never sat right. For a long time, mainly before Ruin, I had theorized that Vanny programmed Monty to destroy Bonnie in order to get parts to repair Burn Trap with. But then Ruin came along and showed us that all of Bonnie's parts are still behind Bonnie Bowling, so that motive is kind of not good anymore. 
That doesn't have any evidence backing it up now. The method, however, still makes sense to me, but a fellow theorist just came out with a theory that pretty much fully convinced me. Last week, ID's Fantasy put out a video going over the weird, mushy part of the timeline between Security Breach and Ruin. It's really good, go check it out here, after you're done with this video. But part of that video goes over what possibly happened to Glamrock Bonnie, and she, along with inspiration and additional evidence from Glam Mike Trash on Tumblr, posited that this prototype Freddy was actually the one who committed the act. And the method and surrounding context here does make a lot of sense. After all, like I've been saying, Monty has has so much animosity and aggression towards Freddy, but no evidence of it towards Bonnie. There's a lot of really good evidence and other information about this in her video, so I do recommend watching that when you're done here. But using that theory, we can place Bonnie's destruction pretty early in the timeline and say that a prototype version of Freddy was the one to do him in. The questions that still remain, however, would be why did prototype Freddy destroy him and what is the connection with Bonnie and the wet floorbots? Well, I've got some pretty compelling evidence for the second one, but the first one is admittedly a little rough. I'll be honest here, there is incredibly little evidence for a motive behind Bonnie's destruction, prototype Freddy or otherwise, frankly. The best I can offer here is some kind of speculation based around the context of what the animatronics were going through at the time. That speculation would be, Glitchtrap and Vanny first tried to overtake the prototype version of Glamrock Freddy before any of the other animatronics. The thinking here might be that because it was a prototype, Type, it could have had less security protocols and be easier to breach in general. And although it was, whatever it did have did not mesh well with overriding it by Glitchtrap's virus, specifically overriding the relationship that Freddy and Bonnie had. They were incredibly close. Freddy doesn't go into the bowling alley on account of how much he misses Bonnie. In Bonnie's green room, there's not only a Freddy statue on his desk, but a signed poster that says, forever and ever, love Freddy. In other words, Freddy and Bonnie are boyfriends. This is canon. I don't make the rules, I just say them. Anyways, in the opening cutscene of Security Breach, we see Freddy short circuit. Now he does this when he presumably targets Gregory, and if the books are to be believed, he is very close to the boy that he thinks is Gregory. At the time was GGY, but that's neither here nor there. So if a regular version of Freddy short circuits and pretty much passes out when trying to target something it likes, I can imagine a prototype Freddy could have just went wild and start lashing out at everything around him when the program told him to target something he liked aka Glamrock Bonnie. So maybe it went on a rampage and destroyed Glamrock Bonnie above Monty Gator Golf. And that's the best explanation I've got so far. Maybe someone else can help, but that's what we're working with right now. Now let's move on to something kind of equally loose, but something I feel much stronger about, the wet floor bots. One thing that stood out to a lot of us in the community is that in the files, the wet floor bots are tracked by a counter labeled souls. When one is deactivated, the counter decreases by one. So if this is something that means something and isn't just a fun nickname the devs gave it, then that would be implying that each wet floor bot has a soul. But why? Where would they even come from? We're talking about 32 individual wet floor bots, each with their own soul. Where would we even get that many victims? If we think of confirmed victims, the only ones that come to mind are from the security breach alleyway ending, in which we see Gregory pull up a newspaper that says, missing, local residents continue to disappear, and nine silhouettes. So I tried to see if there's any way you could link the silhouettes in the paper with the wet floor bots, and I don't think this is the right way to go about it, but the best way you could argue for the newspaper silhouettes is if you take one silhouette away because Gregory's right there, assuming that this silhouette is Gregory, then we have eight silhouettes and 32 two wet floor bots. So you could divide that and get four wet floor bots per soul and maybe just because they're small, the soul gets split up. Now, I don't think this is true, but I'll go into why. But technically, very technically, you could argue we have one piece of evidence that can support this. Now, I don't think this is likely, but if for whatever reason you want to argue for this explanation, twice in these games, we see something that could be hinting towards a soul splitting into four robots. In the beginning of Security Breach, we see four staff staff bots surrounding a broken staff bot on the ground, and in Ruin, a broken Glamrock Bonnie surrounded by four wet floor bots. I think these are both just Give Gifts Give Life's references. But if you want to, you could make the argument that this is a subtle way of the game telling us that some souls can be split into four. But again, I don't think that's true. One, it's a stretch at best. 
But two, the counter that tracks the wet floor bots is called souls, not parts of souls or soul parts or anything like that. For a cleaner answer, I think we would need 32 victims to match up with 32 wet floor bots. And I still think we would need some kind of connection for why they would choose to possess essentially service equipment of all things. Wait, service? Service workers? Fazbear employees. Okay, so as some of you may know, Security Breach had several messages referring to something called the All Staff Meeting. Essentially, all service staff were required to attend this, and at this meeting, it's incredibly likely that they were all fired and told they were going to be replaced by staff bots. But it's been theorized as well that Vanny took this opportunity to kill off all the remaining staff that were starting to catch on to what was going on at the Pizzaplex. That would be a large amount of dead workers, but the issue is we never really get a clear number. Luckily, many have theorized the location of this meeting. Notably, in FunAuf's first security breach theory, he goes into this location, the cafeteria of the loading dock, where we find the message pink slip that goes into the workers being replaced. This whole area is dirty and damaged, but specifically this corner of these sectioned off tables are heavily damaged. The majority of signs of a struggle are in this location, the same sectioned off tables that are right in front of a massive sign talking about staff bots. And logically, it would make sense if the meeting just took place in this corner. They probably wouldn't take up the entire cafeteria, just section off the tables they need. If you've ever worked in an environment like this, you've seen this happen. So I counted every single chair in that sectioned off area, and I got 25. So not 32, but those aren't the only missing Fazbear employees, are they? Because in the therapy CDs we can collect, we meet a total of five therapists. Now, one of them is confirmed dead and two are confirmed missing, but it's heavily implied that all five end up dead. That would bring us to a total of 30, which is closer, but it's still not quite there. All the evidence we have suggests that 25 Fazbear employees were killed at the all staff meeting and that five therapists that were employed by Fazbear were also killed. And that's where I thought the trail would go cold. But the duffel bags had one more trick up their sleeve. Two two exit interviews. One of them is a message from a perspective of someone trying to beat the Princess Quest machines. Arcade Conspiracy, quote, Exit interview. They're working together, the arcades. They are hiding something. The glitches. Glitch them all at the same time. Then the princess will recognize me. She's testing me. I am not yet worthy. The others are protecting it. Let me stay. I am so close. Just one more night, please. I can save the princess. The other one is catching on to what's happening here. Night shift. Exit interview. Of course I got stuck in the arcade. Every time I exit the security office, I get locked out. If it's not my low clearance level, then I need a stupid party pass. I'm on the security team. Shouldn't I have access to everything? I swear those things are messing with me. This place is not safe. Give me my $100 and I'll go. Both of these employees were being interviewed before leaving the Pizzaplex, and both of them on some level knew something was going on. If Vanessa was the one to conduct these interviews, then it would make sense if Vanny wanted to tie up loose ends and just kill them then. In fact, killing them off might have been the inspiration for the all-staff meeting in the first place. And if those two are victims, that would bring our total up to 32, the exact same number of wet floor bots. So if that's true, why are they connected to Bonnie? One thing to note is that Bonnie is powered on at first, something that being back there so long should be impossible. However, we've seen power in these animatronics go on much longer than they should if they're currently possessed. But who would this 33rd soul be? I think it would be someone also introduced within the ruined DLC. I've been a big proponent of the theory that Cassie's dad is much more important to the plot of Security Breach Ruin than we're giving him credit for, because I think he was the only technician at the Pizzaplex to truly begin to understand what was really going on. And because of that, Vanny or someone associated with her ends up bumping him off. Cassie's dad was a lot of things, but what's important to today's theory is that he was a mega fan of the franchise and Bonnie was his favorite character. He also knew what happened to Bonnie. If he was trying to fix this Pizzaplex, maybe even because of what happened to Bonnie, then upon dying he'd definitely have some unfinished business. What exactly am I implying here? Well, bake with me for a second as I lay out exactly what I think happened to Glamrock Bonnie. Cassie's dad. On the brink of discovering everything that Glitchtrap and Vanny have been doing at the Pizzaplex, is killed, silenced, 
a problem wiped clean by Vanny and Glitchtrap. But his job isn't finished. He needs to save this Pizzaplex, and he needs to ensure his daughter will be okay. His restless soul moves its way into his favorite animatronic, Glamrock Bonnie. But once in, although he's powered it, it's been too damaged to be able to move. He's trapped in this back room, trying to extend into anything he can reach nearby. But as he lay back there, he can sense his fellow Fazbear employees one by one being killed off, just as Charlie did before him. As we've seen in the earlier games, FNAF likes to have someone to shepherd the souls. Charlie is off either doing something else or has moved on. Cassie's dad is the new shepherd. He begins to lead his co-workers into somewhere that they can still remain in this world, the wet floor bots. At some point, Vanny begins to catch on that more and more of these wet floor bots keep staring at her, screaming at her in any way they can, terrified of that mask. And she sees the same glow from Glamrock Bonnie's eyes. She tries to deactivate and breaks a bowling ball over his head, but nothing works. She moves on, she's got bigger fish to fry, but that rabbit thing stays in her mind. Maybe someday, someone else with the Vanny mask can get rid of it for good. Is that definitely the deal with what these wet floor bots are? Dude, I don't know. I've been wrong before. In fact, if you want to know what else I've been wrong about in predicting about Ruin, you can check out this video right here. But what do you think happened to these wet floor bots? I'm really curious to see what your thoughts are in the comments. In the meantime, a huge shout out to the best channel members, the Dough Risers, and until next time as always, stay toasty slices.